Who are your favorite siblings in horror cinema? As you can probably guess by the end of this video, mine are Dwayne and Belial Bradley, but I want to hear from you down in the comments. Hey everyone, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt. I'm a little bit hoarse because I've been sick, but one of the great parts about being sick is that you can uh, kind of guilt-free watch movies and then deep dive into special features and extras and stuff like that. Which is kind of advantageous because this week we're going to be talking about Arrow Video's new release of Basket Case, 1982's Basket Case. One of my favorite movies and a movie that I feel like I own uh, way, way, way too many copies of starting with a, a X uh, Hollywood video pre-owned VHS and leading to where we are now through DVD and Blu-ray versions. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why this one's the best, and if you haven't seen this movie, why this movie is one of my all-time favorites. It's kind of an old rule of, like, film criticism thumb that it's harder to talk about a movie that you really, really love, have find kind of no faults with, than something that's maybe a little bit more complicated, maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, pluses and minuses. Basket Case is a movie that there is no universe in which I could probably say a bad word about. As I mentioned on the show before, I didn't grow up with parents who were the world's biggest horror fans, but they liked a select few horror movies. Uh, and, and for some reason, for whatever reason, one of the movies besides the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Rocky Horror Picture Show, one of the movies that I kind of grew up hearing about before I even saw it was Basket Case. And not that we all automatically love the things that our parents love, but uh, seeing this at a kind of perfect formative age informed what I like. Very briefly, if you are a basket case version and it is about Dwayne Bradley, a young man, comes to New York uh, for the first time. So it is kind of a, a, a upstate kid in the big city type story. Uh, he's carrying around this basket. Everyone's asking him what's in the basket. And Belial, his brother, his conjoined twin brother, deformed, just kind of two arms and like a little blob body uh, and sharp teeth. His brother's in the basket, and they are taking revenge on the collection of doctors and veterinarians who separated them when they didn't want to be separated. That's the that's Basket Case in a nutshell. The movie is so much more than that, and if that sounds a little too out there and kooky, realize that the film knows that, and realize that the film is made to kind of support and bolster and um, celebrate that kookiness. The first feature-length film uh, from Frank Henenlotter, Basket Case, is the ultimate New York grindhouse movie, even though it comes kind of late in the cycle of that 1982. And it is, as they, as they mentioned on the, the copious, copious features, somewhat self-aware, somewhat paying homage to monster movies and New York sleaze and, 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 and all the things that make up this movie are somewhat reflexively used and somewhat commented on. But it's not, it's not a, a, a parody. It's not a faux grindhouse film. It's made, you know, right there on, right there on Broadway, right there in on Forty Second Street. You know, a loft in Tribeca. It, it's it's it, its locations are iconically New York uh, and authentically New York. Even though a good amount of the film is actually set bound, and that's something that I kind of really. This is my umpteenth million watch of the movie in order to do this review. But that's something that I really keyed into this time, is how much of the movie is set-bound, how much of the, the Hotel Broslin, which isn't a real hotel, isn't a real place, they had to um, kind of build and construct, even with all of these sets being sets, it still feels incredibly authentic and incredibly uh, lived in and grimy. And I think that is, if I were to, if I were to say, you know, my favorite thing about Frank Hennenlotter's films, and, and they are very unique and they are very him and they all, and a lot of them have that kind of uh, body horror dysmorphia element and theme running through them. But the, the, the one thing they have most is that, is that, um, that tangible aesthetic. They all feel, uh, through Frankenhooker, brain damage and, and even bad biology, they all have that, even though it's like later, they have, they have that, uh, that kind of like, I like this movie and it's fun and it's enjoyable, but it's still something about it that feels dirty and unkempt and unclean. Uh, and, and that's what you get in Basket Case with this brand new transfer. And I actually, uh, I didn't throw in my, my Something Weird video image Blu-ray uh, before to kind of compare, like do like a compare contrast uh, between the transfers. But it, this new transfer was done by the uh, Museum of Modern Art, Modern Art MoMA in New York. And it, it, is, it is incredible. It looks really, really great. 
Uh, this film was shot entirely on 16 millimeter. It does appear pillboxed uh, when you watch it on a widescreen television, but as they say several times on the special features, the best the film's ever going to look. Um, but that's, that grime is preserved. Uh, the grime is, is, is not how it's presented to you. It's endemic in the film. It's, it's, it's in the filmmaking itself. So don't worry if you're one of those uh, weirdo snobs that's like, ah, the best way to watch Basket Case is on VHS. No, the best way to watch Basket Case is on this new Blu-ray. That's really all we're going to talk about the movie and my effusive praise of it because you know I love it and you just, if you haven't seen it, you have to see it for yourself. I'm guessing many of you have seen it, but here's the real reason uh, to pick this up and that is the extensive, extensive, um, you know, Bible font list of extras on the back. It took me you know, two days worth of, uh, of being sick with like a strep throat type thing in order to watch all of these. And like, I'd say like 25 to 30, maybe a little bit more than that, like 40% of these extras are holdovers from previous releases, but it is kind of the ultimate edition, the amalgam of, of all these different releases. But the new stuff that's on here is really, really, really incredible. Um, there are not only new behind the scenes uh, interviews and, and retrospective things that you'd, you'd kind of expect, and those are all very good, and the angles and they take are different than the old archival stuff that was presented. Uh, but, but there's new, uh, never before seen short films to this, so narrative uh, things. There is a, there's a little directed by Frank Henenlotter, um, semi-sequel kind of like catching up with Dwayne and Belial in upstate New York a mini movie here which is very funny and very cool and very like made clearly with affection there is a, a short animated uh, film which is really really incredible and really gross and, and, and creepy uh, called Belial's Dream uh, which I, I definitely recommend don't skip over that that animated short's done by a guy named Robert Morgan it's stop motion animation it's really gross and creepy and cool and there is Slash of the Knife, which is a 30-minute 30 uh, minute film from 1976 that Hen and Lauder put together with a lot of the same actors who are in Basket Case. And it's kind of a, um, like a reefer madness, 50s-style shock uh, scare film, but with, uh, but like talking about, well, it's a spoiler to tell you what it's talking about. But suffice it to say, it's, uh, it's Hen and Lauder kind of in uh, John Waters mode a little bit. It's very fun, very funny, and, and definitely a curio. If you're a Hen and Lotta completist, you're gonna wanna see that. There's just a ton of stuff on here. There's a new piece with uh, Joe Bob Briggs, uh, where he talks about bringing the film to drive-ins in Texas. It's, it's, it's just every kind of conceivable angle or approach you could take to talking about Basket Case, Arrow does it on this set. Um, and if you're, kind, if you're the kind of person that watches features and watches special features, you gotta get this, and if you're not, if you just wanna see Basket Case in the kind of preserved in the best way uh, you can see it, that's another reason to get this. It's, it's, it's my favorite disc of the year, it's my favorite release so far of the year, and that's not including Criteria and Night of the Living Dead, which everyone's raving about, uh, but I haven't picked up yet, which I definitely will. Like, that seems vital, that seems important, that seems like, oh, finally a, a, this, a movie like this getting its due, but in some ways, Basket Case, uh, is 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 like that Maybe not quite as important for the history of cinema. Maybe not as respected. Maybe not as um, thought-provoking uh, but a, 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 a Hallmark film all its own and a, and a movie that's near and dear to a lot of people's hearts Especially mine if you're going to pick this up and to be the fiddly, uh, you know guy with a YouTube channel uh, Collector that I am this pins exclusive for people that buy it at diabolic DVD I'll put the link down in the comments along with all the other stuff that I talk about here, which I always do. Very nice. They did an Almer uh, for uh, brain damage, and I have that one too, so Belial gets to sit next to Almer now. This week's book recommendation is gonna be a real quick one. Uh, friend of the show, friend of, 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 of yours truly, uh, Lucas Mangum, has a new book out. It is called Gods of the Dark Web. If you like things like Basket Case, if you like uh, gore and gratuitousness and weirdness, uh, it is released by Dead Eye Press, so if you know Dead Eye Press, they're kind of the premier uh, splatterpunk and extreme horror label. They've released uh, 
Brian Keane, Wrath James White, Ed Lee, a lot of great ex splatterpunk and extreme horror writers. So Lucas is uh, joining their ranks here. This is a book that he sent me an early copy of, but I haven't been able to read yet. So it does come with that caveat that I haven't read it. But looking at the pedigree of the publisher and looking at the strength of Lucas's past work, uh, I don't mind shilling for it a little bit. Seems like a cool book. I'm looking forward to picking it up and getting to it when I can. That's it for this week. I'm Adam Caesar. If you like this video, please hit like. If you really like this video, please go check out my others and subscribe. If you want to find out more about my writing, uh, there's a link down in the description to get you to the website, to get you a free sample, stuff like that. Hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you next Friday.